Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death. But Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket, our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life. Right. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Pay attention to that message. You've got to believe with your heart and that, and realize that you need a Savior. You're a sinner. And your past, present, future sins can be forgiven when you believe truly on the blood to, for, to wash them away. And you can't earn yourself into heaven. Take a look at the word peace. I just did a search. Here I'm looking at New Testament verses. Romans 3.17. In the way of peace have they not known. How many people in this world are, are not happy or not content with their lives? They don't have peace. It's the way is not known. But how do we find it? Romans 5.1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you can see here in, in Romans 8, 6, it goes on to say, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if you're of the world, you're, you're not of, of the Lord. You're not going to have the peace. You're not going to be spiritual in nature, and you're not going to have a connection with the Lord Jesus Christ, and most importantly, to be saved and to have that peace through the Holy Ghost that comes. And Romans ten fifteen a great reminder to get out and preach. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And it's important for us to edify each other. Um, Romans fourteen nineteen. let us therefore follow all the things which make for peace and, and things wherewith one may edify another. You know, we're supposed to bring joy to one another. Romans fifteen thirteen. now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of of the Holy Ghost. We have hope and peace because we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost in us as a saved Christian. Amen. And all these things are are beautiful. 1 Corinthians 14:33, we know that for God is not the author of confusion but but of peace. So God is our peace and he is always there, you know, for us when we when we need him. Let's go down to um, Ephesians 2.14. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall partition between us. And verse 15 goes on to read, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of the commandments contained in ordinances, so those were the Jewish laws that they were under, for to make it make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. So there's no longer Jew or Gentile in the church age when you believe on Jesus Christ, we're all one. That, that, that wall of petition between us in verse 14 goes away. And our, and again, our peace comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Philippians 1, 2, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We know that that, that peace, it comes from that. Let's look at Colossians 1, 20. And having made peace through the blood of, blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So when Jesus died on the cross, he... He reconciled is reconciliation is like a payment for something done wrong. So if you think about it in terms of a court, you might go to court. You maybe you had a speeding ticket and you have to pay five hundred dollars. Well, that's that's the reconciliation for what you did wrong. Well, Jesus Christ shed His blood was the reconciliation for all of our sins. So it's a beautiful free gift that we don't deserve. Um, and if, as a body of Christ, Colossians three fifteen, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Are you thankful that you have the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you thankful that you're saved? Are you thankful for the blessings God gives you? You should be. All praise and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ on this channel. We lift and raise him up, and we keep him in our hearts and minds, but we also need to have peace in our own lives, and that can only be done through Jesus Christ in the belief on what he did for you so you have eternal peace and salvation. God bless. Have a great, great day.